Please turn off all cell phones and electronic devices. Would everyone please stand for a moment of silence and attention? recognizing October 2017 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I'd like to invite up Harry Poor from the County Exec's office. I know uh, Legislator O'Donnell, who's on the Safe Homes Board, come up to the front as well. Kellyanne Costa-Larrier, Executive Director, Safe Homes of Orange County, and the well, County Exec, Harry Poor's <coughs> representative. Yes. And could everyone in the back please take seats? We have plenty of seats in this auditorium. introduce Kellyanne to do the presentation first. And... Hi, thank you. Thank you very much to the County Legislator, Kellyanne Costellari. I'm the Executive Director of Safe Homes. And as you know, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And we're very grateful to the county's support, um, not from the County Legislator and the County Executive, but to the community members and the constituents in Orange County. As you know, domestic violence impacts most homes. One out of four homes will be impacted by domestic violence in their lifetime. And last year, we provided over 17,000 advocacy services in this county to Orange County community members. So I just want to thank the county legislator, as well as everyone here today, for recognizing Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It should be every month, um, but we are very grateful to the county's support in our programming and the ability to provide the services to the victims of domestic violence, teen dating violence, and trafficking in Orange County. So thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you, Gillian. Uh, my name is Harry Poor. I'm here for County Executive Steve Newhouse. And I uh, just want to say a couple of things. Uh, when we, we think that this issue is so important that when your state funding fell short, county executives said we'll, we'll fill that gap. Because personally, and the executive said this to me earlier today, we can't think of anything more cowardly than someone inflicting injury or harm on a woman or a child. And anything we can do to prevent that through education, through providing services, we stand ready with you to do that. I think it's so appropriate to have Inaudi Esposito with us as well today because she is a director for the Orange County Human Rights Commission and domestic violence is a human rights violation. Good luck to you and thank you for what we do. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, I just can echo what Harry just said. Um, we salute and uh, you're an altruistic, altruistic um, benevolent organization, and it's good to know that our residents can go to your organization when they have these kind of issues. And the audience there to support. Jen, did you want to say a couple words? Or just... yeah, I'm on a number of boards, but the Safe Homes Board is probably the most rewarding. In fact, it is the most rewarding. I just want to talk about Kellyanne for a couple of seconds. She has probably the most stressful job in all of the county. I know the county thinks she's got the most stressful job. <laughs> But she does. Because what she does, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, she's never off duty. She's always on the phone. She does a fantastic job for people in the most need, those that can't take care of themselves. So tell me, congratulations. She's doing super. And you're right, it should be 12 months, but it's October. So.
Resolution of the Orange County Legislature designating October 2017 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Whereas domestic violence is a serious crime that affects victims of all races, religions, ages, education, income levels, and whereas, the last whereas, Safe Homes of Orange County and their Family Justice Center providing one-step, co-located, wraparound services for victims of violence and their children offer help and assistance for all members of families torn by domestic violence as well as prevention education activities in our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Orange County Legislature hereby recognizes the invaluable work performed by Safe Homes of Orange County for the prevention of domestic violence and designates October 2017 as domestic violence. And it's my signature and the county exact signature. I'm very sorry for being remiss. I'd like a, a moment of silence for those who lost their lives in that terrible incident in, in Las Vegas. Thank you. Okay, we've got, I think, believe 27 speakers up on the agenda before the agenda, rather. First up is Erica Myers from Weiwei Yonda, Protect Orange County, CPV. Next up would be Valerie. I can't even say this. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> also CPB. Right up here. I'm sorry, the microphone now. Yeah. Erica Myers. Good afternoon. Um, I'm, I'm not a public <coughs> speaker, but I did write my notes quickly on the way over here because. I felt compelled to speak to you today. Um, I live in the oldest home in the town of Weiwianda, built in 1765, and it is on the National Register of Historic Homes. It sits two miles from CPD. The first child born there became the wife of Stephen Fullerton, and I don't know if any of you are familiar with the name. In Newburgh, all the Fullertons were judges, lawyers, um, and assemblymen in Orange County. We have had a 14-year town of Weiwianda supervisor, 100 years of Dr. Myers serving the community. We've had three generations of county supervisors, Judge Hewlett Clark, Judge William Harvey Clark, and Judge Robert Harvey Clark. None of them died rich men, and they always put their constituents first and foremost. My home has lots of noise, 24-7, 365, since 2001 when my husband and I moved back to the family home. I live a thousand feet from Balchem, a chemical plant that decants one of the most toxic gases on earth. I asked for help with the constant life-draining noise from town board, planning board, code enforcement officer, my county legislator. They all told me there's no noise, despite the constant 65 decibel roaring in our home. I developed asthma last year, and I'm glad it's not lung cancer, but with the advent of the toxic pollution that CPV will generate, it may be lung cancer soon enough. We have no quality of life, also due in part to the constant CPV trucks and tractor trailers using my six-ton residential road. Here is one of the pictures of the trucks that wakes me up every morning at 4 a.m. These two trucks speed by my house Every day, we wrote a letter to the town board telling them that these trucks will kill somebody. It took eight days till one of them killed a 17-year-old young man a month ago. We will also have no value 
of our homes when we flee if CPV starts up? Who with enough brains or enough money to buy our home would do so? I love my home and its amazing history, but I hate the noise and the traffic and especially the health constraints surrounding us now. Please pass this resolution. Thank you. Okay, Valerie, next and on deck is Catherine Brown. I can pronounce Ruskevich okay, though. Ruskevich, I can say, but Luchnikovska, you can. Uh, I live in Warwick, uh, very close to Pine Island. Uh, bribery, felony, and fraud were the centerpieces of the scandal last year involving competitive power ventures and the top aide of Governor Cuomo, as well as others. Those two resigned, but the building of the unneeded CPV plant proceeded, despite questions regarding the legitimacy of the permits on which the construction was based. The, the scandalous situation was separate and apart from the objections of many hundreds of residents of Orange County who have been contacting the governor's office, the DEC, and their legislators. Anyone who passes the CPV site on Saturday mornings for the past few years has been aware of the sign-carrying picketers who represent many others who fear for the continuing viability of our air, water, and soil, soil that will be adversely impacted by the operation of a fracked gas plant in our midst. Effluents, such as methane among others, to be released in the operation of this massive 27-story eyesore, threaten the very health of all within a 50-mile radius. Large amounts of toxic chemicals, including ammonia, are to be stored on site, and no plans for emergency situations have been anticipated or offered by CPV other than run in the opposite direction. Local fire and emergency agencies have no special contingency plans. Extreme climate events uh, we are seeing now in recent years, not to mention the inherent threat of terrorism, loom as danger dangerous to the well-being, if not the very existence, of all in the proximate community. I live in Warwick. The residents, farmers, and business community are all equally disturbed by this lack of full consideration and planning for the problems that are part and parcel of the existence and operation of the CPV plant. Recently, 250 businesses and local organizations in Warwick presented a letter to Governor Cuomo asking him to, and I'll give it point by point, one, publicly demand the suspension of all permits and approvals for CPV regarding the plant and the Millennium Pipeline. Two, halt all construction at the CPV site. Three, insist that the entire review and approval process for the construction be completely redone with full transparency to and participation of the public. Four, conduct a thorough investigation into corruption associated with the approvals, permitting, and building of the plant and pipeline. Five, stop all subsidies to, C uh, to CPV, including the IDA pilot agreement. It is our lives and our money. We the people should have the final say on this and, and uh, I'm sorry, I, I said, I, my computer screwed up here. Uh, and and uh, we back the DEC's judgment against CPV and it should not be overruled by FERC, particularly as they based it on such shaky technical grounds as filing time grounds that have nothing to do with our health and welfare, nor that of the greater Hudson Valley. Thank you. Chancellor, you have CPV. Then Michael Haynes is next on CPV. My name is Catherine Frame. Everybody gets thrown by this knowledge. I live in Greenville, eight miles from the plant, and the CPV plant has been underhanded and corrupt from the start. The people of Woyanda were uninformed or misinformed and never had the chance to voice their concerns or to vote on whether or not they wanted this monstrosity in their community, let alone the residents of all the other surrounding towns that will also be impacted. 
It defies all logic that land on which previously nothing was allowed to be built because it was considered protected wetlands is now fine for a huge fracking power plant. Please put people and our environment ahead of greed and corporate profits. The Millennium Corporation literally and figuratively bulldozed their way through this project rather than wait until all the permits were issued. To this day, there isn't even a sign in front of the plant proclaiming to passers-by the purpose of this complex. It was foolish of them to continue building until every step had been approved, but that seems to have been their strategy so that the public would think it was already a done deal and too far gone to stop. And I've heard that from many people who still weren't aware until recently what it really was. Please let the buck stop here before it's too late. Looking at the big picture, this plant has a life expectancy of only 40 years. But the damage it will do to our air, our water, and our soil will last for generations. I beseech you to do all that is possible to stop this now. Halt construction immediately and preferably permanently until everything is investigated. Here we are in the emergency services center, and I can't help but wonder what, if any, plans have been made for the worst case scenario because God knows local fire departments can't handle it if those ammonia tanks or diesel tanks glow. Please follow through on both proposals or combine them into one strong one and do what's right for the county. Thank you. Also, CPV resolution. Um, you're obviously talking about CPB and the, um, the resolutions that are on the floor. Um, when this project of uh, CPB was first looked at, uh, some of the technology regarding fracking was pretty new. There wasn't a lot of history. We hadn't really heard about some of the dangers associated with it. And meanwhile, the companies that were produce, uh, produce, promoting renewables were uh, struggling with profitability so that it wasn't seeming to be viable. Our infrastructure was inefficient, and we were worried about Indian Point, and we didn't know if there was gonna be enough energy. And CPV was tempting because they said, we'll fill in the gap. They offered additional revenue to the communities, but the complete impact to the environment was not available to most of us at the time this all began. Meanwhile, as we've looked to determine some of the benefits and the risks, a lot of things have changed. There's reason to doubt about the long-term economic gain to the community. A couple of examples here, uh, Newburgh and Marlboro were disastrously affected by the dance camera, and then uh, Tompkins Cove affected the Haverstraw uh, and that surrounding school district. Uh, we can't really be assured that we can bank on that money. Uh, we have to consider the fact that New York State has committed to a 40% reduction in greenhouse emissions in their state energy plan. And we also have to think about the fact that NYISO contracts and the way that that bidding process works is the um, most, the lowest bids get the, uh, the ability to generate and to have their uh, energy purchased. Um, what we're seeing with the fracking process is that these wells um, are not large quantities of, of uh, natural gas compared to what we might see in Texas. So they're constantly having to set up new drilling sites, pipe, and transport that stuff. So we've got a lot of higher costs associated with fracking as compared with um, other forms. Meanwhile, we're seeing explosion in the growth of renewables. We've got all these solar farms that are springing up, and big companies like NRG are standing behind that. It's going to make it hard for those guys to compete. If they're not making it, and then we have an empty building there, then all that potential income we were banking on isn't there. And meanwhile, we've got uh, We've got concerns about uh, toxic chemicals that are um, going to be passing along this pipeline near key water supplies that su uh, supply many of the communities around here, going along the aquifers, going along the rivers. 
And uh, we also know from CPV's own documents, um, the New York State Energy Highway, where it talks about the anticipated uh, emission from this method of generation, it's going to be 2.2 million tons of greenhouse gases per year. That's comparable to LaGuardia Airport. Okay. Thank you. Next speaker, Jerry Cook. And on deck, Jane. Yeah? Fine? Piero. Oh, Jane Piero. I'm sorry. I couldn't read the. Look like an N. I know Jane. I'm sorry. That's a yes. Hi. Uh, I'm Jerry Cook. I live in Mount Hope. And uh, where do I begin? Uh, let's look at uh, energy, uh, electric energy uses. Uh, 2014 was 164, uh, 514 gigawatts. 2016 is it's, it's dropping. So the amount of the electrical power we're using every year has diminished, and that's not including what's going on with solar. Uh, in the nine counties surrounding New York City, there's now 417 megawatts of power produced by solar. In 2001, it wasn't even there. Also in New York State, there's a proposal of 20 uh, solar plants uh, that will generate anywhere from 20 to 98 megawatts. And combined capacity is enough power to shut down the general nuclear power plant in the county. So we have a lot of stuff going on, and the solar stuff is just going to grow. Uh, so uh, I, I would strongly suggest that uh, there's a, a, a tarnishment over a lot of people, a lot of politicians in the county, over campaign contributions from the CPP. Uh, my suggestion is uh, back up the idea of the Attorney General investigating and it all look wonderful. So, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, the Harvard School of Health, uh, Public Health. Uh, they did a study about a particulate matter in autism. And a particulate matter is really small particulates that get stuck in the lungs and from there they get in the bloodstream. It winds up uh, the risk of having autistic children is greatly in increased during the third trimester of pregnancy. So this is something you have to look at. Uh, I've called a few people. Uh, there's autism support groups in every town in this county, every town. And they're listening, they're active, they're very concerned. So what you do here today, if you want to get reelected again, listen to them. So uh, get rid of this, this nightmare. Uh, the amount of poison is in this uh, is uh, cogenians, neurotoxins, uh, endocrine disruptors, the list goes on. Uh, we need a, a complete new slate on this, a new, a new health study, because the health study is so important. And that little town of Wei Wei Honda who approved this thing doesn't have a clue of the scope, on the massive scope of this impact on the rest of the county. So I want to thank you. Thank you, Jane Rebels, followed by Tom Denny, CPB. Good afternoon. Um, I come here with the background in health care. I am retired now, but I've worked in school districts for children most of my career in Orange County, primarily in Orange County. Um, it really concerns me when I hear the different studies that are out of the particular matter in autism. We all know there's a rise in autism. Um, we don't know what the cause is, but if there are leads that something might be a cause, I think we have a moral obligation to stay on top of that for children. It's, uh, it's tragic that a family has to deal with that. It's also a major expense, education-wise, when we're looking at educating kids and such. And we're all concerned about our budgets and what our taxes are. Um, back in 2012, I guess when this was first came up, this resolution, a resolution was praised and supported by all members here uh, for this $9 million project. And perhaps at that time, there were a lot of things about it that seemed really attractive. The building and what money it could bring into the county, but it seems like a lot of you have listened 
and have learned a whole lot, myself included. I didn't know much about this project, and over particularly the last year when I got more involved in reading other things, just have heard a lot more about it. I live in the town of Montgomery, not right in the area. Certainly all of Orange County is within the 50-mile radius, so you're all responsible for the residents in your community, their health and well-being. Um, why there wasn't more of a proactive stance taken by this body of human beings is really puzzling to me, very disappointing. I could go into the different toxins, but a lot of those have been mentioned already. Certainly this industry is not alone in admitting pollutants uh, simultaneously. There'll be a lot of pollutants in the air, but this industry is unusual in doing so, so close to residents. Children, pregnant women, and elderly are especially sensitive to pollution. When there are environmental alerts, certainly in daycares, in the school system, and for the elderly people, my mother's in a home with older folks now, they're told, please stay inside because it's not good for you. We have problems already in Orange County. The Orange County Legislature has a moral obligation to put the health and safety of <coughs> all constituents first. Please vote yes to both resolutions. Thank you. Hello, Tom Denny, uh, way, way under New Hampton. Uh, I'm, I'm involved in this because I've been poisoned by the medicine compressor station. Um, I had an MRI in my head for headaches, and they couldn't find a thing. So I started reading. Um, I had notes. So I wanted to talk to you about climate change. Thank you for taking this important step um, to review the gas plant size of MetLife Stadium, or half of MetLife Stadium. Uh, we have many problems facing us, larger, none larger than climate change. The Pentagon now states that climate change will contribute to food and water scarcity, increase, increase the spread of disease and spur mass migration. In their defense review report, they admit to keep the nation safe, the Pentagon has to think long term about this topic. In 2010 was the first time that climate change was in their report. And they've calculated now with sea level rise, it will significantly affect 153 naval installations within years. Climate change is now the greatest national threat. I'd like everybody who cares about this to look up David Titley. He's a rear admiral with the Pentagon, and he talks on how he was a climate denier, and now he's an advocate. He goes around discussing how this is our biggest threat. Okay, every year new studies are coming out with different projections to demonstrate how uncharted this is. Uh, this is the biggest crisis civilization has ever faced, and we are putting a power plant to help this climate change. Three record-setting hurricanes ravaged Houston, the Keys, and Puerto Rico. The costs, uh, these are costs, it's a costly lesson, but this, um, I'm not nervous at all. Guess what, our lives depend on this. Okay, I'm gonna stop looking at my notes. You people are so important right now. Okay, Governor Cuomo is ignoring this. He's got a big decision to make. And you people are sitting here, there's 12, 15 of you, you're getting paid to do a job. You've got to look after the health and safety. Okay? The sea levels are rising. D.C., Boston, Miami, they're all going to be underwater. We saw New York get sunk. Okay? Some of, you, some of you look interested and care. Some of you look like you're bored, like this is not your topic. Guess what? This is your topic. There's nothing bigger. I like the opiate talks, I, the, talking about the heroin. I like hearing about that. I like hearing about policemen getting new cars. I like hearing all of that. This power plant is right in the middle of our county. You can't forget that this is important. There's two resolutions. We, we all know that one was brought by the Democrats and one was brought by the Republicans. I don't know how this could be a Democrat or Republican issue. If any of you have time and want to spend half a day Come with me to Pennsylvania, you can see where the gas is coming from, and you can meet the people who can't drink their water. They cannot turn on the faucet. That's 
where the gas is coming from. This is not, most of the gas will not come from Texas where they do conventional drilling. It'll come from fracking where they poison water. They pull it out of the Susquehanna River and they poison the water with chemicals. They put it in. Thank you. That's my time. Guess what? This is important. Please pay attention. It's the end of our planet. Thank you. Good day to everybody. Um, I just wanted to first say thank you to all the legislators out there who have accepted my requests, continued requests at communication, personal communication with you to help uh, steer you in an educated uh, uh, way to making a, a good vote today. Um, so those of you that did return my phone calls, my emails, I really, really appreciate it. Those that didn't, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know. Maybe you're doing your own research. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you, you did that. Um, that, that that's, that's up to you. Um, I, uh, I wanted to take a minute to address the letter uh, that was sent by CPV's uh, representative, Mr. Rumsey, to Mr. Brescia uh, last week. Uh, it was an amazing, I, I know you guys, you guys really like jokes. The last session, there was a great joke that got everybody laughed. Um, this letter was the joke. Every single thing in it was completely misleading. So I just, I'm going to go through some of these. This is what he says. Given the positive impact this plant will have on air quality. <laughs> right? It's an audacious statement and it's completely misleading. There's no recognition of the massive methane emissions that will occur, not only during the combustion phase, but the entire extraction and transmission phase as well. This is Pennsylvania too, and everywhere in between. The CPV project is just one specific part of the frac gas infrastructure system that includes the well sites, the pipelines, the compression stations, the metering stations, the power plants. This industry segments all these things to make them look acceptable. But when looked at as a whole, the numbers are irrefutable. The Berkman resolution only calls for an assessment by the, by the appropriate department, the State Department of Health, to look at the potential health impacts. This should have been done years ago, and the, the information is only more alarming now. It needs to be done now. Here's another thing. The significant mitigation efforts made to limit the impact on water. Mitigation, the definition itself, which is reducing the severity, seriousness, and painfulness of something. The definition itself is an admission that there are negative impacts. Why should it be acceptable for there to be any negative impacts on our water quality? Why? With today's technology, the only, the only answer to that question should be significant efforts have been made to eliminate any impacts on water quality. It's the only path to a healthy and prosperous future for our children. And then the final one he says, Mr. Rumsey says, we are proud in the effort that we have made in communicating our goals, strategy, and commitment to the region. This statement by Mr. Rumsey concludes a letter filled with shallow facts and misrepresentations. He's proud of a process that has seen public disclosure almost completely negated. And like somebody said before, there's not even a sign outside of it saying what it is. Nothing. Nobody got information about this in the community. From the, the neighbors to you. Proud of a company that has colluded with indicted officials to further the permitting process? He's proud of a facility that will perpetuate the fracking industry in our neighboring state of Pennsylvania, putting thousands of people's drinking water at risk? He's proud of a company that has fed false narratives about the necessity of this project from the very beginning. And he's proud of a company that has intentionally and illegally segmented portions of this massive project to make it look less destructive. And finally, he's proud of a company that weighs their own economic prosperity you, over the health and safety Thank of the citizens they claim to be committed. Next speaker. Can I have one more second, Mr. Brescia? I've spent a lot of time contacting you guys. I know you, you have. Guys. I know so you have. We have 27 seconds, speakers. No, we can't give you 30 seconds. No. No, you cannot. We want to I'm be sorry, proud. Scott. We I'm want sorry, to be Scott. proud of the national Joe Terrell, next speaker. We Please. want to be proud of our elected officials that they're standing up for our rights. Sorry. Hello. Yeah. There are moments in the life of a community when good people are required to speak up and take action, or their silence will consign them to the harsh judgment of present and future generations. And this is such a moment for all of us present who either 
bear authority in government, all who treasure the life-giving natural resources that we've inherited as residents of Orange County. We're under siege from a foe which cast itself as a benefactor, a job creator, a generous clean energy supplier, a sensitive, responsive neighbor to the local community, a corporate entity which has prioritized environmental concerns and a need for local economic growth, a provider of bridge energy for New York State's clean energy future. That's the corporate speak. Here are some of the facts. CPV is a masthead of a behemoth gas infrastructure imposed on us against our will by a multinational energy consortium. The project includes methane leaking pipelines, compressor stations like the one in Minnesota that's already making residents very sick. A project that will demand 150 new fracking wells per year of operation. CPV, according to their own permit air, air permit applications, will routinely emit 1,000 tons of toxic and earth warming pollutants. You know the list. CO2, formaldehyde, benzene, sulfur dioxide, etc. Particulate matter, among many others that the CDC lists as neurotoxins, endocrine disruptors, carcinogens, and mutagenic agents. CPV spin doctors have attempted to minimize the impact of this research on the dangers of this poisonous technology by using segmentation during the approval process, which strives to minimize impacts of each individual component of the project while ignoring the dire aggregate impacts of the entire supply and generation uh, chain. Segmentation is illegal in this circumstance, according to state regs, because all these components of this massive project are functionally interdependent. They're a whole action that cannot work without each other. Their aggregate impact must be considered in the entirety. There's legal precedent for this in the 2014 case of Delaware Riverkeeper versus FERC and Tennessee Pipeline Company, where the under planning board was negligent in its duty. We demand another look, and you should too. Uh, prosecutions, furthermore, are underway to determine if Governor Cuomo's right-hand man, Joe Pococco, and others took bribes during the permitting process of CPV, raising additional integrity concerns about the permitting process and lend strong support to our request that all buildings cease until this case is fully litigated. And today's record reports 1.1 million in payout to the OCIDA, followed by the public lie of a promise of 350 jobs at the plant. CPV's own documents state that only 23 to 25 jobs over three daily shifts are planned, and those jobs aren't guaranteed for county residents. These health, ethical, and legal questions demand further evaluation from Albany. We are your neighbors and constituents. We're gravely concerned about the present and future dangers to public health, environmental conservation, and safety surrounding this project. We have unanswered questions about all of these allegations of corruption, segmentation, and politicizing, and the permitting process. We welcome your important and symbolic gesture today uh, to a call on NYSDIC to uphold New York State's rights and its sole authority over water quality decisions in defiance of FERC's recent and egregious overreach on the issue. Furthermore, we hope that the second resolution, which amplifies and supports the first, will pass by consent and in so doing shall be a bold, unifying message to our leaders in Albany that your legislature stands firmly with us, your constituents, who have grave and as yet unanswered concerns about this massive and impactful gas infrastructure project. And if CPV truly believes its own press, they have nothing to fear from a full and public evaluation of the merits of the project. Please vote yes on both resolutions. Stand with us proudly, together as citizens and residents, on the right side of history, okay? Now is the time.
What is the latest peer-reviewed science? These were the questions that should have been answered and they never were. You've received two letters from our group and one from CPV. Our letters have numerous citations from experts who warn that the latest science is telling us that there are risks to health and safety to air and water. Our citations include statements from prominent scientists from prestigious universities like Harvard, Yale, and Cornell. You have a letter from CPV with no citation that says, don't worry, trust us. <laughs> Why would you trust a billion dollar corporation that stands to benefit financially from this decision? Why would you trust a company who's involved in one of the most sordid corruption scandals in New York's history? What does this company have to fear by the simple and symbolic ask in these resolutions? To have our state agencies charged with these matters to look at the impacts of the project and the integrity of the review process. The first time there was ever a real public hearing about this project at all was just two months ago in Middletown, New York, when the DEC held its first public hearing. 6,000 substantive comments were filed. Almost 100 residents spoke. At the very end of the hearing, a mother with four kids spoke. She said she used to live near the Millennium Pipeline, and her family had to move because her kids were getting sick with nosebleeds and rashes. My neighbors from West Ham, who had similar experiences after the compressor station was built, moved. People who've lived near the metering station have moved. Do you think people would leave the homes they love if there wasn't a real impact? Millennium has had to buy homes from some families. Why would they do that if there's not an impact? Once a family sues and settles with these, these companies, they're forced to sign non-disclosure agreements. The public is then deprived of critical health information. This is why a health assessment must be done. It's easy to look the other way and let a company come in and destroy wetlands or pollute, pollute air and water. But once that damage is done, it is almost impossible to undo. Look at Flint, Michigan, or Hoosick Falls. How do you tell a parent whose child is diagnosed with leukemia or a family whose water well is contaminated, sorry, I made a mistake? You are supposed to be the voice of your constituents. And we are telling you to tell New York State to do its job and evaluate the project with transparency and accountability. We are not going to be a sacrifice to anyone. Raise our Melissa Martens. My family and I live a half mile from the Minnesink pipeline connection in West Town, one mile from the Minnesink compressor station, and six miles from the CPV power plant. My young children, along with all the children of Orange County in their early developmental stages, are the ones most directly affected by this clandestine decision to expand our fossil fuel dependency. CPV will be the largest frac gas power plant in New York State. The power plant sits on wetland and will certainly contaminate our groundwater. The pipeline runs through pristine farmland, 13 streams, 30 bodies of water. Methane leaks and spills are inevitable. At least 4.7 million tons of greenhouse gases and particulate matter will be emitted annually by CPV. Radioactive particles will increase cancer rates and other health risks. All of this will occur within miles of countless schools, medical facilities, housing developments, and other vulnerable populations. A project of this magnitude deserves a comprehensive review on impacts to the environment, human health, and safety period. The New York State DEC rejected the water permit for this pipeline. FERC cannot come in and override our lawful authority at the request of a multinational company whose for-profit pollution compromises our well-being. We chose Orange County as our lifelong home, the place to raise our family. We had hopes our children would come back and raise our grandchildren here. But with the construction of this power plant and pipeline, our family, like many others, must now look for another safer, cleaner place to live a place where our officials have our best interest at heart, not the economic development of a harmful industry. This is not an aesthetic choice. This is life or premature death. We accept the Orange County Legislature does not have legislative or regulatory jurisdiction or permitting power over this project, but you do have a moral obligation to us to look out for our best interest, your constituents. We ask that New York State have the ultimate authority. We ask for an uncompromised environmental review and legitimate health impact assessments. Just as was done in the 2012 resolution, these resolutions allow for the public record to be written and our collective opinion established. 
A yes vote is a show of support for our state agency's jurisdictional rights. A yes vote is a show of support for public health and safety. A yes vote is a symbol that you are listening to the concerns of the people in the world around you. A statement from the Orange County government website on history of Orange County reads, and Orange County is still making history today. The ecological movement in the United States began here at Storm King Mountain overlooking the Hudson River when environmentalists prevented a utility company from destroying the mountain. Well, the ecological movement continues now with the people standing against CPB and Millennium to prevent the destruction of the health, beauty, and unique agricultural heritage of our region. Make history today by voting yes to these two resolutions. I'll conclude with the words of Tom Petty. Well, I won't back down, no, I'll stand my ground, won't be turned around, and I'll keep this world from dragging me down, but I'll stand my ground. Good afternoon, I'm Francesca Testi. I live in Pine Bush. Thank you for hearing our comments. Uh, I'm going to read some relevant environmental laws. This should be some help to you, there are laws that exist that make your decision a lot easier. First of all, you have the Clean Water Act, Section 401 Certification. Any applicant for a federal license or permit to conduct any activity, including but not limited to, the construction or operation of facilities which may result in any discharge into the navigable water, shall provide the licensing or permitting agency or certification from the state in which the discharge or originates or will originate, that any such discharge will comply with the applicable provisions of sections 301, 302, 303, 306, and 307 of this title. Such state or interstate agency shall establish procedures for public notice in the case of all applications for certification by it and to the extent it deems appropriate procedures for public hearings in connection with specific applications. The second law, is the National Environmental Policy Act statute. The purposes of this act are to declare a national policy which will encourage productive and enjoyable harmony between man and woman, hopefully, and his environment, to promote efforts which will prevent or eliminate damage to the environment and biosphere and, simula and stimulate the health and welfare of man, to enrich the understanding of the ecological systems and natural resources important to the nation and to establish a Council on Environmental Quality. In section 1508, it states, cumulative impact. Cumulative impact is the impact on the environment which results from the incremental impact of the action when added to the other past, present, and reasonably foreseeable future actions, regardless of what agency, federal or non-federal, or person undertakes such other actions. Cumulative impacts can result from individually minor but collectively significant actions taking place over a period of time. I hope that you will realize there's laws that say what you should be doing and you'll follow the laws. Thank you. Followed by Mary Ann McDonough. Change it to CPR for the residents of Orange County if you don't pass this resolution. Methane in Minisink. The residents of Orange County already know firsthand living near frack gas infrastructures poses many of the same health risks as living next to, next to fracking wells. 2013, a frack gas compressor station was built in Minisink Valley to move gas along the Millennium Pipeline. Because of emissions from the compressor station, children living nearby began suffering from nosebleeds, rashes, headaches, and dizziness. A study done by the Southwest Pennsylvania Environmental Health Project in November 2015 found that the air pollution around Minisink was worse than that of a big city. Families with homes close to the compressor station have walked away from them. CPB's frack gas power plant would release 43 times the emissions as the compressor station. Researchers at Purdue University and the Environmental Defense Fund have concluded in a recent study that natural gas power plants release 21 to 120 times more methane than earlier estimates. Natural gas, <laughs> long touted as a cleaner and more friendly, climate and friendly alternative to burning coal, is obtained in the U.S. mostly via the con conventional or horizontal, I'm sorry, <coughs> horizontal drilling method known as hydraulic fracking. 
Methane, the main component of natural gas, is 85 to 105 times more potent of a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide in the first 20 years it's in the atmosphere, according to the EPA. Cornell Earth System scientist Robert Howarth has said, since the planet responds so quickly to methane, if we want to slow global warming, we must immediately and drastically reduce methane emissions. But what Howarth and other researchers studying emissions are finding are scary rates of leakage from extraction to delivery. That's continual leakage at the wellhead. There's leakage from the storage and processing facilities, purposeful venting, and also accidental leaks. There's leakage in the pipeline systems, distribution systems, and storage systems. If just 3% of the frac gas being mined and supplied to the power plants leak through its life cycle, natural gas is worse than coal for global warming. In the Unita Basin, the National Oceanographic and Atmosphere Administration found 6 to 12 percent leakage rates for natural gas production. And before the Aliso Canyon disaster, they found leakage in the Los Angeles Basin was 17 percent. Harvard found that the U.S. shale bloom, bloom overall has increased global methane emissions by more than 30 percent. Pay attention, please. Pass the resolution. Thank you. I'm Marianne McDonough Otisville. Uh, before I begin to read what I'm going to be talking about, which is the New York State Authority superseding FERC, I want to give a shout out to two groups that are here today. First, I want to thank these parents that brought these young children, and they are sitting through this very lengthy presentation because that is what this is about. We need to protect those their lives. And secondly, I want to thank the group of, from Protect Orange County that has been relentless in coming before you. I have come myself. It has been more than a year coming before this, trying to come before this group, and we've not been able to until today. So, that being said, I will proceed. While I am very grateful that these resolutions are before you today, all I can say is it's about time. Protect Orange County has tried uh, to come before you for over a year and bring these issues to your agenda. We should not have had to fight this hard to bring this health and safety issue before Orange County government legislatures or the county executive. All county legislators have been, should have been begging us to bring this to the floor because it's your health and safety as well if you're going to remain in Orange County. Regarding the FERC decision in the New York State Authority, FERC's decision against New York State DEC was entirely procedural and had nothing to do with environment or community impacts. It was about a timeline. Fact is, the New York State DEC received an incomplete application from Millennium on the original date in November of 2015, which is the date Millennium wants to go by. This permit was not submitted in its complete form till nine months later, August of 2016, initiating the one-year deadline. The argument rests on whether the application was filed in 2015 or 16. That would have only given DEC three months to evaluate Millennium's application. Millennium cannot be given special privileges. They are required to submit a completed application just like everyone else. Only the submission of a completed application begins with, when the one-year deadline starts. But this question has already been adjudicated. In June of this year, a federal court ruled against Millennium's assertion that the New York State DEC missed the deadline. And in a similar case, the, DEC, the D.C. Court of Appeals ruled in favor of the New York State DEC after FERC, against FERC in the case of the upstate New York Constitution pipeline. Furthermore, the Clean Water Act established that states have the authority to issue their own quality water permits, and the federal agency cannot subvert this process. The New York State DEC must now defend its own decision and require that greenhouse gas emissions of CP project be calculated. The Valley Lateral and Competitive Power Ventures were illegally segmented and need to be evaluated as a single huge project that they are. New York State must first assert its state rights to monitor and permit this project. We cannot allow this type of federal overreach on matters that are states' rights. Burke has been stubborn and slow to accept the fact that states have veto power. Under the New York State Gas Act, FERC approves the construction of interstate national gas pipelines. However, 401 of the Clean Water Act requires certain federally licensed projects gain state-issued permits. States have legal authority to stop natural gas pipelines. Counties, on this case, your case, 
have the right and the moral responsibility with these types of resolutions to weigh in and advocate for the health and safety of their residents, not to advocate for the power and money-hungry uh, international corporations that only want to make money here and then pack up and leave after they've done their damage. While there is much more to do with this project, please today pass both these resolutions as a start in the right direction. Good afternoon, Orange County Legislators. I'm Julie Doyle from the town of Wallkill. As a mother of four and a state certified teacher, I think about children a lot. Sometimes it feels like they have a lot of power, like if you're trying to toilet train or encouraging them to try a new vegetable, or even waiting for an unborn child to release those hormones that begin the labor process. And then sometimes it feels like they're totally powerless and they're looking to you as the adult for every little thing. And really, it's like that for all of us. There are times when we get to make the decision, we get to be in control and influence the outcome, and then there are times when the decision-making power rests in someone else's hands and we have to wait for the outcome and hope it's good for everyone involved. This afternoon, I look to you as my elected representatives to make a decision I can't make, to use your power to protect Orange County and to call out corruption in your sphere of influence. Earlier this year, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit upheld New York State's denial of a water quality certification for the Constitution Pipeline, a critical win for the Attorney General's office and the state's authority to take necessary action to protect its waters and natural resources. The Attorney General released the following statement, quote, New York must be able to do what's necessary to protect our environment, and we're glad that the court agreed. It would be unacceptable for a pipeline or any project to pollute our waters and undermine New Yorkers' health and water resources. Today's decision marks a major win for New Yorkers and for the state's right to take the actions necessary to protect the public and our environment, end quote. The proposed Constitution pipeline would include construction of 100 miles of new pipeline across undeveloped lands in central New York, impacting and crossing more than 250 streams and more than 80 acres of wetlands. In December 2014, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission approved the pipeline, but conditioned that approval on certification from New York State that the project would comply with state water quality standards and requirements. Following a thorough review of the project, the DEC denied the certification on the grounds that Constitution failed to provide sufficient information to demonstrate that the project would meet New York's water quality standards. Constitution then challenged DEC's denial. The Second Circuit rejected Constitution's argument, noting that the state is entitled to, quote, conduct its own review of the Constitution project's likely effects on New York water bodies and whether those effects would comply with the state's water quality standards. The New York State DEC, Attorney General, and Department of Health are in place to protect the people. Please vote yes and support their vital role in democracy. Thank you. Followed by Joan Hutcher. I want to say that you guys are in a position of leverage. If you pay attention to what's going on, you have tremendous leverage for the next generations, for the future of Orange County, which way the county goes, if it's a polluted, compromised landscape, or if it's stepping into the 21st century. CPD is 40 years in the wrong direction. Yeah. Some things we already know. You've heard a lot. I hope you're remembering it. Dr. Tony Ingraffia from Cornell University, who's an industry expert, says, what is the reason the CPV power plant is being built? It's not to be a bridge fuel man. It's not because New York State needs the energy now. It's to pr provide a return on investment for the international companies that have invested in fracking and now need a plant to burn that energy. And here it is. And boy, aren't we Orange County people suckers. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> 
Let me just say um, a couple of very specific things. One, there's one last pipeline that needs to be laid, 7.8 miles, and part of it is going to be called HDD, Horizontal Directional Drilling. And this is going through wetland. This is going through farmland. And uh, let's see. There's an HD, a planned HDD at um, mile post 5.5 to 6.5. That's one mile of horizontal drilling. And what happens is uh, the insertion of the drilling fluids, including bentonite clay. The uh, drilling procedure cannot guarantee that that clay is not going to foul the, um, the farmland, the aquifer. There are some places where this, uh, where the water is up at the surface. Um, we know that farmland has already been fouled by some of the drilling that has taken place. And we're looking at another 7.8 miles. The, uh, Millennium in, in um, drilling does not have a plan for the deposition of the bentonite clay. Now you think um, clay sounds innocent. This clay um, log the water line, the water, the um, local territory. The other thing I want to talk about just very quickly is there's, there's the ground, and then there's the health. And we cannot afford to have set ourselves up in with the Orange County Legislature and the Orange County government to have to pick up Thank testing, you, testing. Thank you. Next speaker is Joan Hutcher. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Joan Hutcher, I live in Warwick, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the corruption that got us here today. Um, the power plant was born in meetings held by Town of La Rionda and an energy company, CPV. A project this size burning frack gas with a 15,000 gallon tank of ammonia on top of our aquifer should have gone straight to the, DOSD, sorry, the DEC for permitting and review but somehow we wound up in the Oyanda Town Planning Board. When the first environmental study was not going quickly enough, John Rosano fired Green Plan Limited because Green Plan had serious concerns about water, endangered species, air pollutants, and the visual impact on the region. Green Plan stated they needed more time to fully complete their studies. So CPV and the Town Planning Board were very unhappy and they replaced them with CT Mail Associates. CT Mail approved everything really fast, didn't see any problems with water, no problems with air, who cared about the visual impacts, everything was great. So who were they doing an environmental study for? People living here or someone with deeper pockets? In the meantime, the lobbyist and former aide to Como, Todd Howe, cut a plea deal which led to Joe Prococo's indictment for bribes with seven other co-defendants. Mr. Prococo's wife was meanwhile being paid $7,500 a month for a job that she didn't even have to go to. I'd like that job. This incentive money was for CPV to get a power purchase agreement. So now that they've bribed people, are we really supposed to trust them? We don't even know how many people have received money to get this thing going. If they're bribing Cuomo's top aide, they could be bribing everybody right to the security guard at the way way on to town hall. Nobody knows. New York State DEC, Attorney General Schneiderman, and the Department of Health are all in place to protect the people of our state and our county. So we are asking you to please vote yes today. Thank you. Followed by Dorothy Winter, CPB. Good 
Thank you very much for hearing us today. I'm Mary Mikowski from Warwick. All of you live in Orange County. You have friends and relatives and neighbors here in Orange County. And I'm sure that you want the best for yourselves and these other people you know. It's not easy to take a stand against very powerful forces that are not really concerned with our concerns. I want to appeal to you to protect the health and welfare of the people in your county and yourselves as well. I did want to give a couple of facts that we have. Uh, some from the Southwest Pennsylvania Environmental Health Projects report. Annual average pounds of chemicals released from a single Title B facility, which would be like the CPV, and associated health effects. 106, 158 pounds of lower respiratory organ toxics. 182, 933,933 pounds of upper respiratory system toxics. 102,559 pounds of circulatory system toxics. 154,887 pounds of mental and behavioral disorders toxics. I'd just like you to think about that. Um, I also have a comment from Dr. Larissa Durska, founding member of Concerned Health Professionals of New York. The medical community has been warning of the health impacts of gas infrastructure for several years. Five years ago, I submitted comments about the air impacts, as well as the environmental justice issue, and the need for a health impact assessment prior to proceeding with this huge emitter of air pollutants which are now a recognized cause of cancer. Concerned Health Professionals of New York has now published four editions of a compendium devoted to documenting the peer-reviewed literature on the health impacts of fossil fuel extraction and infrastructure. The overwhelming evidence tells us that the health impacts of gas infrastructure are real and that the, uh, the uh, impacts are serious. Serious. <laughs> In short, if this plant operates, people will be harmed. People will be harmed. I urge you to vote yes on both of these resolutions in support of DEC defending its position against the water permit and the one requiring a Department of Health study which really must be done to assess what kind of impact this could have on the people who live in this county. Thank you. My name is Dot Winter. I live in the town of Wayweanda, just one mile from the CPV power plant. Other members of my family lived in West Town, very close to the Menacing Compressor Station. This is comment written just yesterday by Linda Peters of Pike County, Pennsylvania. This is the reality of people living near high pressure gas line, pipelines. This event happened just last night. There is not a question of if there will be a similar event here. It is a matter of when if these risks are not properly addressed. There was a breach of the Tennessee pipeline up in Lackawaxen. This should be alarming to all Pike residents. My life along with many of my neighbors were put at risk. This response to the emergency was woefully inadequate. My day was going well. I spent the day burning sticks, branches, along with leaves and pine needles. Around 5.05 p.m., I heard a rushing sound from over near the pipeline, about a quarter mile from my home. It, surrounded, it sounded like water rushing over a waterfall. The noise continued, so I called a friend on the fire department. He said he would look into it. 
Ten minutes later, he called back and said the fire department had been dispatched out. The pipeline had been breached and was spewing natural gas. So now the gas line has been burn spewing for more than 20 minutes, and I have a bonfire burning for more than six hours. I go to the corner of Wheela Gong and tell them about my fire. First guy tells me to just get a hose and put it out. If I had hosed it up for three hours, it still wouldn't be out. I ask a second person. That person advises Tanker to come to house and extinguish it so that it does not ignite the gas leak. 5.45 p.m., fire department was great. They came and doused it with water, putting the fire out. 6.20, another fire vehicle comes to my house and advises me that there is a mandatory evacuation and they are going house to house. It has now been one hour and 20 minutes since the pipeline has been breached, and now they are evacuating. No information as to where to evacuate to. No information as to how far one has to go to be safe. No way to find out evacuation has been lifted so people could return home. Why did it take one hour, 20 minutes to evacuate? Why are plans not put in place to keep us safe? Obviously, no drills have been done between local fire departments and the pipeline to ensure our safety or proper protocol in case of emergency. I found a lot of people standing around looking at each other, not knowing what to do. Why weren't sirens blaring? Why wasn't the reverse 9-11 system used to notify cell phones, house phones, and text messages with order and instructions to evacuate? The line pierced was the old 24-inch line. They are currently installing a second main to run parallel to the first one. Why are they being allowed to continue with no safety plans in place to ensure our residents' safety? This is completely and utterly unacceptable. I'm furious. We must demand answers on a local, county, state, and federal level. The local fire department was great, but simply didn't know what to do. Blame starts with inadequate planning, preparedness, and ex execution of evacuation sits on the shoulders of Pike County Emergency Management. I hope you are as outraged as I am, and I hope you, too, will demand answers and accountability of our county and state officials. This branch could have been catastrophic. This would have caused many deaths. Hi, my name is Deborah Kaur. I live in Goshen, New York, and I wear a lot of hats. I'm the daughter of an environmental, mechanical, and gas technology um, engineer who worked on um, Shoreham. He worked on, I grew up on Long Island. And I also worked on the recycling plant, which was right off of Meadowbrook Parkway that they ended up closing down. Uh, one of the causes for the closing closure of Roosevelt Field, okay, which um, was a racetrack out there. Um, and, you know, I've kind of seen these disasters be built. I've seen them be turned down. So you, you actually can turn them down even after they're built. It can happen. You can shut it down. Um, I, I don't know why we're here to begin with and why, how such a monstrosity. I'm also a real estate broker. So I want to let you know that I've, I've worked with many people who've come to me very desperate to come out. They have, I, I sell major league farms. And they come out and they've, they've brought me to their farms and they've been distraught distraught on not being able to get the value of their homes. Um, and they never will. They really will. And there's one farm in particular where they are going to do that sideways drilling. And um, they're just in despair. They're really in despair. I've seen, I've seen other people just pack up and move to different uh, states. I've seen people leave their homes. This is not what this is about, is this? I mean, or is it about money that's coming from the um, people are getting paid off here? We have, and I wanted to also go back to why this and how this got here. I want you to go to your page and I want you to look up economic development and I want you to open up the page on Orange County and I want to ask you why the Orange County Partnership is on that page, okay? That is not part of Orange County. It's a private entity and it does not belong there. Maureen Hallahan should not be bringing us these disasters here in our county. They should not bringing us, be bringing us CPV, Legoland, and other things that are going to turn Orange County 
into the toilet, into Cuomo's toilet. Okay? So we all moved here. I moved to Orange County for a lovely, to, to live in a historic town, to live in a nice place, and yet less than eight miles from me is going to be, if you do not, and, and other people do not de deny this, a plant that's going to produce 10% of all the toxic air in the state of New York, right here in our Orange County. Please shut it down and please remove Orange County Partnership from your page. It's an, it's an embarrassment. And it should not be happening in our reenactment. And that whole crew should be taken down. Thank you. I'm going to explain why the wetlands analysis is deficient. I am Linda Wright from Sullivan County. I have authority to speak about science based on my years of biochemistry research work and peer-reviewed publications in scientific journals. The gas industry has known since the late 1960s that burning fossil fuels is dangerously harmful to living things and would eventually make Earth's environment uninhabitable. We are in the sixth mass extinction of life on Earth, in part because of human use of fossil fuels, say 97% of actively publishing climate scientists. These are two side-by-side -side aerial photos of the CPB site. The lush green color on the left is before construction. The right side, the dirty brown, bland photo is shortly after construction started in 2016. The documents from um, Millenniums have a uh, caption that say, the project will not result in significant adverse impact on either individual Indiana bats or any population of bats. Do you believe that the brown side photo could not affect bat populations? This is impossible, this is a lie. Wetland analysis of the pro proposed valley lateral project is deficient by not identifying damaging and costly impacts to wetlands and waterways. Of the 122 total site acres, 70 acres contain wetlands. Wetlands act as a natural filtration system for waterways. It is unclear at this time if actual, quote unquote, ground truth Wetland surveys have been conduct conducted across the full alignment of valley lateral. There is not a dry mile in that 7.8 mile section. A review of the alignment sheets suggests that there are areas that have not been fully ground truthed. They may have only been desktop analyzed. Where access to property surveying was not permitted, then no ground truth uh, was conducted. The DEC delineations are more conservative than federal, and even the federal ones say that you can't use um, wetland data unless it is ground truthed. At this time, is it my belief that a full ground truth survey for all wetlands has not been performed? The HDD offer of Millennium to spend 46% more money is not a good thing, it is a ploy to, have, to avoid discussing wetlands altogether and a ploy to avoid the need to map the wetlands thoroughly. Yeah. If, if, um, if complete ground surveying of the wetlands occurs, you will know the full value functionally of wetlands and the endangered species there. Know that HDD fails. There are recent, um, in the news, very easy to find, of shutdowns because of HDD spills in Ohio and Pennsylvania. Any spill of materials in wetlands could suffocate fish, wildlife, plants, and um, Millennium has already wrecked the black dirt region and that's documented.
is Deidre. I live with my three children and my husband right in Middletown off of 84. We can see the farmland as soon as we leave our neighborhood. Um, in case you guys missed this, this was in the Times Herald record the other day. A new audit was published Wednesday by the New York Comptroller Thomas Snapley, and it found a litany of past problems at the Orange County Agency in charge of considering tax breaks to st spur development. The state audit focused on the Orange County Industrial Development Agency and five other New York IDAs. It primarily zeroed in on the period between January 2014 and May 2015, though the audit went further back in some cases. The state found that the Orange County IDA exceeded its authority by both accepting $1.1 million grant from the Millennial Pipeline in 2008, as the IDA was considering tax benefits for the project and redispersing the funds as grants. Also, it lacked oversight of the projects, record keeping, and control while overstating the jobs created by the business to which the IDA had given tax breaks, including Millennium. The Orange County IDA consistently reported the Millennium Pipeline project would create 350 new jobs, according to the Comptroller's report. However, the project application indicated 27 jobs would be created, but did not state these jobs would even be in Orange County. Orange officials told us the project was never expected to create jobs. Brian Buttrey, the, um, a spokesman for the comptroller, said DiNapoli recognizes that the audit was conducted before a new state law, which he success successfully championed, took effect in mid-2016 to require significantly tougher IDA checks and balances. The New York State DEC, the Attorney General, and the Department of Health are in place to protect us, to protect me, to protect my children. Please, please vote yes and support their vital role in our democracy. Segmentation, it, it feeds into those things a couple of people have brought up. Segmentation is defined as the division of the environmental review of an action so that various activities or stages are addressed as though they were independent, unrelated activities needing individual determinations of significance. This is a bogus ploy. Except in special circumstances, considering only a part or a segment of an overall action is contrary to the ex intent of the CEPA. Now, the segmentation that the people have here, and I'm from Sullivan County, I'm from Hurleyville, I'm with Scram, Sullivan County residents against Millennium. This is not the, this, the to talk about the, the Valley Lateral Pipeline and the CPV as, as being segmented, that's no, it goes all the way to Corning. The whole Millennium Pipeline is a project. And, um, the, uh, there are two types of situations where segmentation typically occurs. One is where a project sponsor attempts to avoid a thorough environmental review, often an EIS of a whole set action by splitting a project into two or more smaller projects. This is many more than two. The second is where activities that may be occurring at different times or places are excluded from the scope of the environmental review. By excluding subsequent phases or associated project components from the environmental review, the project may appear more acceptable to the reviewing agencies and the public. And there is a whole list here of questions that you can ask to determine whether or not you are looking at an improper segmentation. And as it was stated, the Delaware River Keeper filed suit in 2014, and the U.S. District Court determined that FERC must consider projects as a whole, not segmented. This may sound hyperbolic, but actually it's not. 
the industries and their shareholders, the fossil, the fossil energy industries and their shareholders, primary objective is profit, not transitioning to renewables and efficiency measures, and certainly not curtailing production, and certainly not with any concern about a post-carbon future except to get it all produced and sold as soon as possible because we all know the post-carbon future is coming. So the industry drive is to continue to produce as much So the industry drives to continue to produce as much natural gas as possible and they will use any means to keep their foot in the door to keep their production going, which amounts basically to one more, more of the big con for the sake of export profit. It is not clean. They are not about transitioning. They are not primarily about providing affordable fuel for American consumers. They are not about building any bridges, but they will use all those con arguments to continue to grow the industry. if CPV comes into the area. Uh, the amount of research from thousands of hours from so many beautiful people and intelligent people and experts have just given us no choice. There is no choice about whether this, this plant should be built or not built. Way we on the first saw the representative from CPV with a nice little picture of a nice little office building they passed uh, the permits without the planning board, without notifying any residents. When the residents heard about it and showed up, packed the room, we were told to shut up. And believe me, we have not shut up since. Um, I would say that, that this is the group that can really have a lot of power. Now, there's no legal responsibility in terms of these uh, these uh, resolutions, but I beg you to do more. I beg you to pass the revolutions, be able to look at yourself in the mirror tomorrow morning, yeah. because if you can't, if you, if you vote no on this, it is saying no to all these people and all of your constituents for whom the first job you do should be to keep us healthy and safe. The health issue is, is absolutely uh, there's no question about the, the effects of this power plant. The safety issue, I came to the, uh, the state-run disaster response team, and I said, a lot bothers me about this plant. What about the ammonia tank? If that goes, we're dead. They said, go and see your local fire department. Well, I don't think the fire department is going to be able to do anything because we'll all be dead by the time. <laughs> Anyway, what I'm asking you to do is pass these resolutions, call everybody that you know, including Governor Cuomo, whether you know him or not, in Albany, and tell him to pull the plug. That's all we ask to do is say no. His father did. We ask that a bridge be named after his dad. Well, follow his dad's example and cut this thing off right now. This has, should never have come to fruition as far as it did, and it should never, never be able to impact the lives of our children, of our parents, of our residents in any way. We were never consulted, and we don't want it, we don't need it. Please, do everything you can after this meeting is over to continue the work to stop this plant. Hello, everybody up there. Um, I don't have the. Uh, this is getting used to my hearing my voice through this. I don't have uh, the detail of information that the other people do back there. Um, but I, as I've gotten older, I've tried to become more of a, more involved. I'm kind of a guy that 
like to put his feet up at the end of the day at work. And, uh, but uh, as an adult and with a conscience, I said I have to get out and do more. So even though I'm kind of feeling wiped out today and follow me, I, I, I have nothing really new to add except I, I'll share that I, um, I grew up in the 60s and in the 50s and uh, follow me. There's a, I feel like I have a certain sensitivity because of the way I grew up, which is had to do with we had the duck under shelters as kids and you know when they say there's potential that Russia will drop a bombs here okay so where's this coming it's I know it sounds off the wall but I think with that and the Vietnam War and other things which uh, made me more sensitive to what's coming down the pike to be more alert to be kind of weary and uh, I've seen things so I pay attention to the environment more I, 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 I think sometimes in the 80s I, sus I suspected well just this Wall Street and everything caught up with that and, and stocks and everybody wanting to be millionaires is going to be ethics were going to be compromised and in 2007 came about I'm not saying I'm a prophet but I worry and I worry and I have a sensitivity physically too and uh, in the sense that um, uh, you, know, a, you know a friend of mine and he could, could be eating at a diner and I can tell there's freezer burn in his food that this is no good and, I just, it's a small sensitivity, you probably have the same thing, but I, I the sensitivity I think also, um, and also I can come down the stairs on a house, we keep it cool at night, but if we accidentally left the stove on or one uh, burner, this is rare, it's not like a ham, I can tell just a little heat coming down the stairs, something's different and I can go over there. So my physical body senses that there's global warming, I know that's a, it's a stretch and I know it's not science, but I'm really worried about, I'm really worried about I'm really, this thing, I hear myself and that I don't, I, then it cuts it. I'm really worried about the future for my, uh, for the progeny's sake. I know you've heard it from everybody, other people, the scientists say it's real. I feel it, I feel it, the environment change around here, much damper springs. Uh, you can't, we have black mold on the, it's not new, it's been around on all the maple leaves. Uh, that's because of the dampness in the air the last three years. There's a lot happening. I'm really scared for the future. You guys have a chance to say, to be leaders here, to turn this thing down. And I know it might not be easy, but just, you know, for me sometimes when I'm scared, I just have to take the step and I call it, I said I'm going to come up here and give a great speech, walk through the door. If you're in the side and you're in the middle and you're a little scared, walk through the door. I mean, if you're scared to say, I don't, I, I, you know, you may be uh, rocking the boat. I hope you take the step. I don't know much about politicians. I only what I read. I don't have any in my family. I've never hung around them to really know what the insides are. But just, I think you're intelligent people and that it isn't all a black and white thing. You really care. Maybe it's mostly you do care and you care about the public and other people. But I, I, you know. So I hope you'll do right by the planet and us. Thank you. Followed by Ruth Adams. I'm Charlie Davenport from Wappinger's Falls. I'm here because uh, you people, what you do here is gonna be heard around the state and in Albany. Uh, the people of Dover Plains in Dutchess County have a big problem. Uh, in the spring of the year 2020, they will start being legally poisoned by the Cricket Valley uh, Energy Plant. Uh, it's similar to the CPV, but it's 1,000 megawatts. Now, this abomination was done perfectly legally, unlike the one you got right here, okay? Um, it's located three quarters of a mile from a high school, two miles from an elementary school, and hundreds of homes are within two miles of it. The project will put, is guaranteed to put hundreds of tons, hundreds of tons per year of pollutants into the atmosphere. And it was erected in compliance with all state regulations and federal regulations. Now, the uh, Department of Environmental Conservation and the regulations of the federal government uh, may tell me that the average air quality around this plant, the average air quality in the region, 
which is a huge region, that would be okay. Insignificant uh, effect. However, nobody will tell me that the people living closest to that plant will not be affected by it. Uh, I believe there's going to be, it's a statistical certainty that people will get cancer there. Now, if you tell me that it won't affect them, you'll be flying in the face of logic, common sense, and about 10,000 years of uh, human beings dealing with fire. So, the only hope that these people have right now is actually to throw themselves at the mercy of the workers building the plant and the, uh, the, the companies, these uh, mega national corporations, and ask them, please don't, don't, don't poison our children. So, I'm going to ask you to pass a strong resolution against CPV, send a message that uh, will be heard across the state, send a message to the people and their representatives here will no longer accept absolute te ab obsolete technology that threatens their health and their environment. And thank you, and we'll see what happens in the plans.
and I believe we have a request for a 10 minute uh, recess, is that correct? Are any objections to the recess? I didn't think so.